John Stenhuizen, leader of the Democratic Alliance and Minister of Agriculture, stirred a controversy on Wednesday when he publicly distanced his party from Russia and President Vladimir Putin, leading to a wave of criticism from politicians and academics alike. The dispute was sparked by President Cyril Ramaphosa's recent remarks during a meeting with Putin, in which he referred to Russia as a valuable ally and friend. Stan Hazen, in contrast, quickly issued a public statement rejecting this notion. He declared that the DA did not consider Russia or its leader Putin to be allies of South Africa. In an interview with the citizen, Stan Hazen expressed his frustration at the lack of consultation within the government of national unity. He argued that Ramaphosa should not commit the entire GNU to a stance without first discussing it with all collision partners, including the DA. The president cannot bypass my role as a leader in the GNU by making statements on our behalf without proper consultation, as Hayes said. He emphasized the importance of including all parties in decisions that reflect the government's collective stance. This is not a one-party show. There are 10 parties in the GNU, and when the government makes statements on behalf of the nation, the DA must be part of that conversation, he insisted. On the issue of South Africa's trade with Russia, Stan Hazen downplayed concerns that his comments could harm relations. He described South Africa's trade with Russia as insignificant and argued that this minimal trade did not justify the government's favorable stance towards Putin. South Africa's trade with Russia is minuscule and it is not enough to warrant supporting Putin's actions in Ukraine, as Stenhazen said, pointing out that Russia's invasion of Ukraine violated international laws. He also took aim at the ANC, accusing the ruling party of undermining South Africa's long-held policy of non-alignment. The ANC is a party that represents a minority of South Africans. It does not have the right to commit the entire GNU to a position without first consulting all members, Stenhazen argued. Stenhazen's position was met with swift criticism from his political opponents. Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture Gaten McKenzie suggested that Stenhazen's reactions might have been different if he had been invited to the BRICS summit. You do not speak for the government. The president does. It's time to get back to work, Minister McKenzie said. The economic freedom fighters also weighed in with the spokesperson Sinao Otambo, harshly criticizing Stenhazen's actions. He described Stan Hazen's comments as an affront to diplomatic protocol, calling his behavior pathetic, immature, and lacking in class. Tambo went on to blame the ANC for Stan Hazen's rise to prominence, labeling him an undereducated minister who has insulted Syriel and our BRICS allies. Former UCT Vice Chancellor Rosina Mamukheti Paking offered a more thoughtful critique. She acknowledged that Stan Hazen had the right to express his views but cautioned him against challenging the president publicly on matters of foreign policy. It may be true that Putin is not our ally, John, but publicly undermining the president's authority is both irresponsible and misleading, Parking stated. Parking argued that Ramaphosa, as the head of the state, was the country's official representatives in all matters, including foreign policies. She suggested that if Stan Hazen had concerns, he should raise them privately. Publicly challenging the president on foreign policy weakens his authority and risks damaging South Africa's standing on the world stage, she said. Pakin concluded by warning that such actions could have serious consequences for the country's international reputation. If our president appears weak, South Africa as a whole appears weak. It is in all our best interest to present a united front, she advised.